Hello, I'd just like to welcome you to today's presentation. It's on the end of year processes in NAV. It's a timely topic for this time of the year as well, as uh, everybody will be running their end of years fairly soon, I gather. Okay, when should you run your end of year? Well, you don't run it on the 1st of July if your financial year ends 30th of June. You'd normally run it probably end of June, uh, sorry, end of July, uh, August maybe. Some companies run it a bit later. But once you've completed all the transactions for that financial year and everything's been checked and, and uh, you're happy that everything's been recorded correctly. How do you run it? Well, there's two steps to it. The first part is you need to close your accounting periods. And the second part is you close your fiscal year. So the fiscal year, that's the part that um, closes all your P&L accounts and uh, does the appropriation journal there. And uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. And why do you need to do it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Completeness is one reason, just to make sure that that particular financial year is completed. And um, also to have the reporting working properly. So things like this year and last year, if you leave the companies open for many years, which I do see from time to time uh, in my travels as a consultant, uh, sometimes you see people that have got five years or seven years of, of um, uh, transactions open, uh, it makes it a lot more difficult to report. So it's always good to uh, keep those old years closed up. So let's have a look at um, what this process looks like in the vision. So I've just got a, a Cronus database here. Um, the ver it's, it's NAV 2009R2, the version, classic client that I'm looking at here. So first thing we're going to do is um, you should have done a backup beforehand as well and, and, not, and not have any users in the system. But uh, you'd come in and you would select the accounting periods here and we've got all of our accounting, accounting periods showing. So also check to make sure that you've got enough open periods moving forward so um, we can see in the Cronus database the, end of the financial years end at the uh, 31st of December. But uh, we can see that we've got up to um, uh, well, the end of this year. So it's quite easy just to create another year. And um, it's going to create it from the last period that you have open there, 12 months and one month periods. That's suitable for here. And now we can see that we've got another uh, 12 months there. So when your system was set up, we'd normally do you know, two or three years that we create. But um, it's surprising how quickly you use up those two or three years. All right, we can see in this uh, Cronus database too that we have got one um, year closed, our first year here. So we're just going to come along and close our year again. Click on the Close Year button. It gives us a warning. It tells us that it can't be opened again. And they, the fiscal uh, periods in that fiscal year cannot be closed. And do we want to continue? So we do. OK, and now we'll see if we scroll down that the... Uh, the next year has been closed as well. So we've, got, we've just closed the current year. Okay, the next step we would go in and run our closed income statement. It's a process. So it's going to create a journal for this. This is our, our appropriation journal. So we've got um, a template. I've selected general here and the default template. Sorry, the default journal. Um, it, uh, based on our, our journal there, it, it will generate the next document number for you. And then we need a retained earnings account. So we just um, select our retained earnings account from our uh, chart there. And closed, in, closed income statement, we might, um, uh, we might just put uh, yeah. a little bit more text in there. So I'll say financial year uh, uh, 10, 11. And uh, down here, close by, if, if you use business units, you can select business units, which, which are more for inter-company users. Um, the dimensions here, what I recommend you do is um, select by dimension and just select all the dimensions that you have in your system, uh, as I have done there. What that's going to do is it, it's going to, the transactions will be um, summarised by dimension and rounded off. And that's going to give your reporting for the previous financial year um, much more separation. It's going to create more records, but you'll have much more separation and much better reporting ability. So strongly recommend that you um, select by dimension there. 
and we've got the inventory period close as well. It's not highlighted on here um, as it, this system isn't set up for it. So if you're using inventory periods as well, uh, you'll need to check that. All right, we just click the OK button. It's off making our journal now. Let's go and have a look to see what it's done there. General journal, default, and here's the um, journal that it's created. So we can see here that it's, it's um, um, moved all of the uh, P&L accounts and uh, created the entries in here. If we go right to the bottom, we'll see our balancing line down the bottom here for our um, uh, retained earnings account here. So that, uh, that last line balances the journal out there. Another thing you'll notice is the, the dates on here. Um, it's got the uh, C in front of the date there. So if you're not aware, every day in the year you can put a C date in there and, and we use those for uh, a closing date. So it, it's like the last, at one second of midnight I often say, on that particular date. So most people have a 30th of June end of year, so your, your uh, transactions will be dated C 30th of June. And what we can do with that, it, it, it's like, as I said, it's like one second to midnight, but if you wanted to do all your trading figures you know, for that particular June, let's say, you would put a filter on there from the 1st to the 30th of June. If you wanted to include your balance day entries here that we're going to create, it would be from the 1st to C 30th of June, and it'll pick up these. So just it's, it's like a 13th period in, in other systems. So uh, the system does that automatically, but if you're posting any journals yourself, then uh, that's also a tip for you. All right, so we just post that um, account, uh, post that journal now. There we go, all successfully posted. All right, that's, that's all there is to it. So we've just closed that financial year. Okay, so just to wrap up a bit now, so the tips, um, some of the tips as well, we, we can try this in your test database first. You do get a situation where you might have a dimension that you might have used in the previous financial year that for some reason you've deleted now, and when we've tried to summarise by dimension, it might come across one that no longer exists. So there is possibilities to get errors when you do your financial year there as well. So it, it's good just to try it in your test database first, just to make sure you're not going to get any surprises in your life. Do a backup first, as I said, and uh, make sure you've got all your users out of your system when you're, you're running this. And uh, the most uh, important tip I can give you there is to use the close by dimensions uh, feature um, in, in the report as well. And don't forget, everyone that's on support, which is most of our customers, call support if you need to. They're prepared for this time of the year. They know they get a lot more support calls. So and it's one of those things that you only do once a year. So feel free to call them, and it's 24-7 support, so if you have any troubles, don't worry about giving the guys a call. All right, well, I hope you've got some benefit out of today's presentation. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining in on the presentation, and uh, I'll probably see you around the trap soon. My name's Stuart O'Donoghue, and thank you very much.